after September 11th, uh, everyone's world changed. And between the threat of anthrax and smallpox and just emerging diseases, infectious diseases together, um, those threats kind of played out and the ability for us to have this joint project between um, the, uh, uh, the university and Nebraska Health and Human Services, uh, we were able to um, put together this program and, and help the biocontainment unit become a reality. An otherwise healthy patient arrived at a rural family practice clinic this morning with rapid onset of severe headache, unexplained bleeding and an elevated temperature. In light of his condition, the clinic nurse suggests to the doctor that they should wear personal protective equipment before interacting with the patient. I think that's a good idea. If there is any chance of exposure to blood or, or uh, fluids, we should use uh, protection. His history reveals a recent trip to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, exploring bat caves. The doctor immediately suspects viral hemorrhagic fever as a diagnosis. Accordingly, the public health department is contacted and diagnostic testing begins. Hello operator, could you please connect me with the Department of Health and Human Services? Hi, Dr. Schaefer. This is Tony Sambo with the Nebraska Public Health Lab. I wanted to let you know that we have ruled out malaria in the Mr. Wayne case. Uh, for the time being, we should consider this a case of viral hemorrhagic fever, and we've already contacted the CDC to make arrangements to ship the specimens to them. Okay. All right. Thanks. Keep me posted. Okay. Mm. Bye-bye. The Nebraska Medical Center's biocontainment unit is a unique hospital-based patient care unit that stands ready for an emergency situation such as this. When we were funded in 2004, we put together a team to design the unit, which included the structure, the infection control practices, how we were going to hire staff for the unit. The major decisions that needed to be made, uh, we had a um, large group of advisors, plus we had some small work groups that looked at all of the issues, uh, regulations, hospital uh, building codes and that to make sure that the unit could function with uh, very high infection control uh, safety practices. And we have monthly staff meetings as well as drills every quarter where we actually come in, um, pretend we have a patient and set up the procedures and go through the different things that they would need to do when we open the unit. Well, I think uh, from the very beginning we recognize that this is the type of unit that we may never, we may never use. On the other hand, uh, recognizing the challenges we've experienced in this country since 9-11 and also the concerns we have about pandemic and other types of concerns, having a 10-bed unit of this, this type really gives us more confidence that if in these circumstances we are prepared or better prepared in ways to deal with these types of uh, patients. I have to give credit for uh, Dr. Phil Smith, our our uh, chief of infectious disease. Uh, Phil recognized uh, that there may be some opportunities working with the state uh, to uh, utilize some um, uh, some of the bio the terrorism, bioterrorism dollars that are available to the state to do a program like this. Uh, he appreciated the fact that um, because of difficulties that other people have had in these circumstances um, that this would be valuable and an opportunity if we could do it uh, to make things work. The unit has a special air handling feature that creates negative airflow to keep potentially dangerous airborne pathogens from traveling to the rest of the hospital. Before air leaves the building, it is filtered and treated to kill potential pathogens. The unit is Nebraska's first defense in controlling the spread of a dangerous infectious disease and has been recognized by Dr. Julie Gerberding, director of the CDC. This truly is an exemplar of the kind of preparedness we would like our whole nation to be able to accomplish. 
What Nebraska has done here at the university is to create the safest possible environment to take care of those patients and give them the care they deserve, but also the protection that they and the rest of the community require. Viral hemorrhagic fever is one of several agents classified by the Centers for Disease Control as Category A. This identifies it as a deadly agent which could be easily duplicated and spread in a community to create panic, fear, and potentially many deaths. The patient will be transferred to the biocontainment unit where he can be given supportive care in a safe environment. The staff can provide this care without the fear of becoming infected themselves. Beyond the many special features of this hospital-based care unit, specially trained staff members are prepared to respond at any given moment to an act of bioterrorism or highly infectious illness. A special communication system notifies the staff in the event of activation through their home phones, cell phones or pages. This is Cheryl. Staff currently on duty must transfer their patients according to hospital policy prior to reporting to the biocontainment unit. The unit is a secure area that is only accessible to staff with authorized access. Staff members upon arriving in the biocontainment unit change into hospital provided uniforms. All personal belongings remain in the pass-through lockers designed for retrieval when exiting the unit. Family Practice Clinic, this is Beth. Yeah, this is Cheryl from the Nebraska Biocontainment Unit. We're preparing to accept your patient. Do you need any advice on what protective equipment to wear? Okay, great. The ambulance crew is on its way. Thank you very much. I'll get him ready. Thank you. Bye. During the activation period, each staff member participates in preparing the biocontainment unit for the arrival of the patient. The dunk tank is filled with an antimicrobial solution to destroy any potential microorganisms on the outside of lab samples. Items soaked in the solution can be safely transported from the biocontainment unit to the lab. The autoclave is prepared to sterilize any equipment, linen or garbage that is leaving the unit. The unit's supply stock is checked and needed equipment brought in. The patient's room is made ready for his arrival and medications brought in from the pharmacy. While the unit is being prepared, other hospital departments are notified that the unit is being activated. Nebraska Public Health Lab, this is Joel, how may I help you? Yeah, Joel, this is Cheryl with the biocontainment unit. We have been activated and we're preparing to transfer a patient into the unit, and this isn't a drill. Okay, we'll be up there to assist you. Okay, we'll call you as soon as we know anything. Thanks, bye. And finally, the staffing schedule is prepared. Hi. The activation checklist is all finished and we're ready to take the patient. ETA in the ER is 30 minutes. Well done, Cheryl. The ambulance crew arrive to collect the patient from the clinic. They have used standard precautions in the transfer of the patient. The patient has also been dressed accordingly.
When the ambulance arrives at the Nebraska Medical Center emergency room, the patient is taken into the decontamination room where he is met by biocontainment staff in personal protective equipment and then transferred into an isopod. The isopod is an apparatus used to transport a highly infectious patient without the risk of contaminating the hospital. To ensure contamination has not occurred during the transfer, the exterior of the isopod is cleaned using antimicrobial wipes. The isopod is handed over to a clean team who will escort the patient to the biocontainment unit. Those involved in the transfer of the patient from the ambulance to the isopod remain in the decontamination room to go through a decontamination process themselves. Hospital security personnel keep hallways clear of patients and visitors and escort the isopod to the patient entrance of the biocontainment unit. The patient entrance in the biocontainment unit is protected by a double-door negative air pressure system that maintains the negative pressure within the unit. Both doors cannot be opened at the same time. Once the cart with the patient enters the external doors and they are closed, the inner doors may be opened. Special sensors monitor the airflow in the unit at all times. After entering the patient care room, the isopod is disassembled and the patient moved to the bed. The biocontainment unit is equipped to provide high acuity patient care. This includes cardiac monitoring, ventilator therapy and dialysis if necessary. Staff members are able to communicate with a patient without the need for the application of personal protective equipment through a video conferencing system. Mr. Wayne, this is Dr. Smith. Well, first thing we need to do is get some basic lab on them. We need a basic metabolic profile, CBC, coagulation studies, and some blood gas. Okay, I'll get this ready. Orders are called through from the patient room to the nurse's station and then entered into the computer. Specimens from the biocontainment unit that are to be transported to the clinical lab must adhere to a set of specific protocols. Lab specimens are placed in a double layer of strong plastic bags that are individually heat sealed.
The specimens are then submerged in a dunk tank that contains an antimicrobial solution for 10 minutes. This will destroy any contaminants on the external surface of the bags. After placement in the dunk tank, a countdown timer is activated for 10 minutes and placed so it can be seen by those collecting the specimen from the clean side of the biocontainment unit. Technicians from the clinical lab can now collect the specimens from the clean side of the dunk tank. Yes, this is the Nebraska Public Health Lab to pick up the specimen. Okay, the specimen's ready. You can come in. Thank you. Those collecting the sample will not require special personal protective equipment to enter the clean side of the biocontainment unit. Okay. The specimens are carefully transported to the Nebraska Public Health Lab. The lab is located on the Health Science Center's campus. Classified as a biosafety level 3 laboratory, it specializes in identifying these dangerous diseases and can perform clinical testing on patients who may be ill from them. In addition to the dunk tank, the biocontainment unit has other unique features designed to control the spread of disease. One such feature is the pass-through autoclave. This allows for equipment, linen and waste to be sterilized before exiting the unit. Items that are sterilized can be safely retrieved from the clean side of the autoclave and transported to their destination without the risk of spreading disease. The unit is also prepared for external threats such as fire and weather emergencies with special firewalls and windows. Back containment unit, this is Cheryl. Hi Cheryl, this is Tony Sample with the Nebraska Public Health Lab. Uh, we have the results for the ISTAT testing for Mr. Wayne, and we're going to put those into the computer system now, so you should have those in a few minutes. Okay, great, thank you. Talk to you later. Bye. He's cybetic and he's short of breath. So Tim, we need to get hold of the pulmonologist on call. Okay, I'll call him right away. Hey, it's Tim back with one of the rooms. Can you call the uncalled pulmonologist and have him come back to stat? Okay, you're up. Thanks. experiencing respiratory difficulty and Dr. Smith has requested that you uh, come see the patient for a consult. Okay, thank you. I'll be right in. Thank you. May I help you? Yes, this is Dr. Susanna Von Essen. May I come in? Yes, please. Come on in. Thank you. If a consultation from a specialist or the services of other staff within the hospital are required, the individuals will be assisted in donning their personal protective equipment by biocontainment unit staff members before they engage in the care of the patient. After the interaction, they will also be assisted in properly doffing their dirty personal protective equipment. Can I get the crash card and intubation supplies? Right after the attacks of 911 and the anthrax mail attacks, there was a lot of anxiety about bioterrorism, and we knew that terrorist groups had weaponized some of these agents, so we were thinking about preparing for a national response to bioterrorism. 2003, 
the child was admitted to a hospital in Illinois with monkeypox, and because of fear of the disease, many of the doctors and nurses refused to take care of her and she nearly died. So with this in the back of our minds, uh, Dr. Raymond and I thought we really need to develop uh, a place where we can take care of these patients uh, where it's safe. So we started by looking around their adult blueprints on how to build a biocontainment patient care unit. So we drew an experience from biocontainment labs, which have been around quite a while, from the TB ventilation experience and from infection control with ordinary diseases. And we also visited uh, the two other units in the country that have these facilities, the SAMRIT, the Army unit at Fort Detrick, Maryland, and we visited the CDC, where there's a two-bed unit as well. And those people, by the way, were really helpful. They came up here, we went down there, and they gave us lots of ideas. So we decided to build a 10-bed unit here at this hospital, the Nebraska Medical Center, but we couldn't have done it without them. They did a great job, and it's an excellent hospital that can take care of very sick patients, and so you need that capability. And the other reason is Dr. Henrik's uh, biocontainment laboratory here, the, the state public health laboratory is on campus, and that would be invaluable so they can perform diagnostic tests for us on patients that may have unknown diseases. We have great airflow, we have special walls, we have special uh, security systems and allow people in, all these bells and whistles, but the most important single thing in this unit is the staff. You need a highly trained staff, and our staff trained for dozens and dozens of hours prior to coming on board here. And that's the best single measure you can have against somebody getting injured or accidentally acquiring one of our contagious diseases. So working with the staff has been great, and I sense a real camaraderie and an esprit amongst the staff that uh, makes it especially fun to work with them. Should a patient die while in the unit, a protocol has been developed to ensure that the person's remains are not a threat to the community. A special body bag is used made of aluminum with a plastic covering for strength and durability. The material can be cut to the required length and the edges, once clamped, sealed with a heat wand. The exterior can then be wiped down with antimicrobial wipes and taken for cremation. Several weeks have passed since the patient was brought to the biocontainment unit. His diagnosis was confirmed as viral hemorrhagic fever. Due to early identification and supportive care, he has begun to respond well and will probably make a full recovery.